Hey everyone, it's Heather from Tiller. Today we're going to talk about the Lauren Grootman Budget Tracker. Uh, we built this spreadsheet template with Lauren and Mark Grootman of laurengrootman.com. It's a way to share their approach to frugal living and family finances. It's a great way to set up a monthly budget, track your progress against that budget, and then fine tune the budget as you build awareness about your spending. When you get started with this template, you'll see that you come to this welcome sheet and there's a lot of great resources here, so spend a few minutes reviewing these checklists. They'll help you get started, and the intent of this video is also to help you kind of get started. Also visit the Overview and Resources page on the Tiller Help Center. There's a lot of really great in-depth content about how to use this template there, so if you get stuck at any point, you can always review that page for more information. Uh, Lauren and Mark are longtime spreadsheet users themselves. They use this template, and they asked us to put together this overview video to help you guys get set up and going with their template. So let's dive in. You'll first start out spending some time on the planner sheet to set up your categories and your budget. The basics of this are across the template, the light green cells are for you to edit and the gray cells should remain as is. So to set up your categories, you can simply edit, delete, or add new categories into this column F. We give you some example categories here, but please feel free to make this your own. We recommend a less is more approach with your categories uh, because you can use this category breakdown area to build out your budget components. For example, we have a mortgage budget component and utilities budget component for the category housing. And for mortgage, we have $1,200, utilities $300, and that sums up to $1,500 for the entire housing category on the current budget lines. The current budget is intended to be the budget for this current period. The future budget is intended to be a budget that you might want to play around with an alternate scenario. Perhaps you're not sure about your income for this month, if you have a variable income and you wanna play around with different scenarios for a future budget. Uh, as you're building out your budget, you'll see here in the budget planner that it'll total up your expected income for your current budget or a future budget It'll also total up your expected expenses based on everything that you build out here in the category breakdown for your various components. And it'll show you how much you have remaining based on your expected income and expected expenses. If for some reason you don't really need a title for a budget component, you only have one aspect of that category, such as in this example, the cell phone category, you don't necessarily need to add a title here. It's fine to leave that blank. Just enter the value for the current budget or future budget. If at some point you decide that you would like to use these future budget values, you can click this roll budget forward button and it will replace the values in the current budget lines with the values that are in the future budget lines. Just be sure that you're ready to do that uh, because that process is not easy to undo. A couple other things about the planner sheet here are the three month average and the last month and the spark lines. Those will begin to populate as you accumulate more data. So the basics of this are set up your categories here in the category column, column F, and then set up your various budget components out in the category breakdown area. Once you've got all this set up and nailed down, you'll spend time on the transaction sheet categorizing your transactions. We recommend that you just start out categorizing transactions for the current month. Don't worry about categorizing a bunch of historical data right now, just get the current month categorized. And you can easily do that from the drop down picker here, or you can simply start to type a category and then hit enter and it will auto fill it in for you. So you'll spend a few minutes here every day, every other day, Pretty often you wanna be categorizing your transactions to just stay on top of things. As you categorize transactions for the current month, if you head over to the dashboard, this is where you'll see things come to life. The first thing to note about this is that you'll wanna make sure that you have selected whatever month that you would like to review your spending data for from the transactions tab. So for example, I have April, I have April chosen here. It's gonna pull in the data from the categorized transactions for that are from April. So we'll select April because there's quite a bit of data there. And then you start to see that it gives you the summary of your spending budget. This dashboard is all about your spending. So it's telling me that I have a current spending budget of $3,535. In April, I actually spent $2,363. So there was a remaining budget of $1,172. I get a visual of this information here to the right, and then I also get this call to action 
that I have three transactions this month totaling $207 that need to be categorized. Keep in mind that when it says three transactions this month, it's talking about transactions from April that need to be categorized. The intent here is just to remind you that if this number is not zero, then there's work that needs to be done on the transaction sheet for whatever month is selected here. The transfers this month, this it keeps track of the number of transfers that you have made, so it's any transaction that you categorize using the transfer category. Ideally, you want this to be zero. If you'd like to learn more about the transfer category and how to use that, visit the Tiller Help Center, help.tillerhq.com, and search for the word transfer, and you'll get a great help article about how to use that. It's really handy if you have multiple accounts linked, such as a credit card, and you're paying off that credit card with your checking account. You can visit the Help Center and learn all about how to use that. The category detail down here is where you can really dive into your spending and how it's uh, comparing against your budget. So you, you'll see these current budget for each of your categories here. This is being pulled in from the planner tab. And then you'll see that as you categorize your transactions, the actual column here is going to update with the total for that category, how much you've spent based on your based on categorizing your transactions on the transaction sheet. And then you'll get a figure for the remaining amount based on what you thought you might spend versus what you've actually spent. If we were to change this to show data for May, you'll see that the actuals changed to zero because I don't have any categorized transactions for May yet, but the current budget values stay the same. So this current budget is always going to be pulling in what's been added to the planner sheet and the actual is always going to display the data for the selected month. As you begin to build data and categorize your transactions, you'll notice that this actual income and spending by month will start to grow out here to the right. You'll see the current month all the way at the left. And then just as you continue to build your data here, you'll see this, these visuals start to uh, pull in. The final thing with the dashboard here is in the account balances. You'll see any accounts that you have linked to the sheet displayed here in the account balances with their balance and then if for some reason an account is being classified as a liability but it's actually an asset you can change that in this light green cell here by typing positive or negative to change the polarity of this value. So that's the basics of the dashboard and the final aspect of the Lauren Gruten budget tracker is the trend sheet. This is where you can really dive into your spending detail across several months at a time. So in the top here, it gives you your income and then your spending and how much was remaining for that month. You'll notice that this uh, current month here is, you're only gonna see this be the current month if you have data for that month. So I have some transactions from May, they're not yet categorized, but until I have a transaction from the current month, I will see the previous month here in this first left-hand column down in the spending detail, I can then see, get a very fine grained view of how much I spent across the past four months for that given category. So those are the basics of the Lauren Groupman Budget Tracker. I hope that was helpful to you. If you ever have any questions or issues, feel free to reach out to us in support. You can email us, support at tillerhq.com, or you can message us via, via the chat window on our website. Thanks so much.